Well, basically, our countdown has started already now. So now, three weeks before launch, that's where we really start simultaneous countdown between the ATVCC control center here in Toulouse and the launch site in Kourou. What we do during this phase is we check every sim single subsystem of the launcher to make sure that everything is right on the satellite, but also on the ground segment. So we make sure that all the communication links are running, all the systems, the servers, the computers, everything is up and running. If one of the major systems fails, this would be a no-go for launch. So we would not launch and try to go to the spacecraft, uh, to the ISS. Second phase is obviously the LEOP phase, launch and early operations phase. What does it mean? Obviously the launch and then the first operations after separation from the, space, uh, from the launcher. First operations means to bring ATV in a stable position. Stable position means you have communications to the ground and you have power. Power means solar rays have to open and direct to the sun so that the spacecraft has full power then we're safe. Once we're in this position, we can keep for quite a while. Then, once we have stabilized the, the spacecraft and everything is uh, normal, we go to the phasing phase. Phasing means we, we bring from an orbit, when, where we were in, uh, injected from the launcher, we bring it closer to the ISS. This can take up to five to eight days. That we just drift below the ISS or in a lower orbit so that we catch up. And then at a certain point, so you'll come closer to the ISS. And then at a certain point, we will start our rendezvous phase. Rendezvous phase means that from this lower orbit, we will really go to the same orbit of the ISS. And once we are in this orbit, we will go very controlled. We will come closer, closer to the ISS. In order to, while, the, while we're doing this phase, we will check out all our systems, which are measuring the relative distance and position with the ISS. And for every distance to the ISS, we will have other equipment that is doing this, this activity. So first it will be the VDM, or first it's relative GPS, so our navigation is based on GPS, GPS position of the ISS and of the ATV. Then we have really video meters, it's called TGM and, and VDM, video meters and telegoniometers, which are really communicating between ISS and ATV. And then whenever we get cl come closer, the equipment is getting more and more precise, because in the end, we have to have a very small target, which we'll have to, to get into. It's a cone of about 60 centimeters. And obviously, we have to get into this cone. Docking is a, is a very, very dense and complex phase. Basically, what's happening, we have a, a probe in front of the ATV, which is going to the cone. Once we hit the cone, we have some hooks opening, and we are not yet attached to the ISS, but we are somehow hanging on, uh, on the ISS. And then we pull the ISS, this probe is pulling the ISS closer to the ATV. Well, basically, ATV closer to the ISS. Then you have connection, and then we do the electrical connection, the informatics, or the, the command com connection, so that we can communicate between the ISS and the ATV. Our docking phase will stop by hatch opening. So hatch opening means when the crew gets from the ISS to the ATV. Once we're attached, we go into a six months or maximum of six months attached phase. During this attached phase, we have several operations. First of all, we have to bring the cargo from the ATV to the ISS. Yeah. But also opposite, we will also take cargo or waste from the ISS to ATV. This is very tight scheduled with the NASA and the Russian colleagues, so I will make sure that the crew time is used very efficiently. We also have water transfer. So we can deliver water from ATV to the ISS. It will not be the case for ATV2. We will have empty tanks, but we will, can also take liquid waste from the ISS in the ATV. And this is very likely to happen. We have oxygen transfer or delivery. In order to keep the atmosphere stable in the ISS, at, the, at a certain point, you, have to, you need some injections of oxygen or air. In our case, it's oxygen. And we will then, at the so right time, release some uh, oxygen so that the atmosphere in the, in the ISS is nice and clean. This will be done by the crew. 
we will set up the ATV and the crew will then make sure that the air is flowing or the oxygen is flowing into the ISS. Then we have two very important functions. While we're attached, during six months, we are basically the engines of the ISS. So we will, for the major maneuvers, redirect the ISS to where it has to be. Most of the time, this is to, uh, to lift the orbit, to bring the ISS in its hole into a higher position. But what also happens is that we are also the engine, if any debris is coming close to the ISS, we will move the ISS out of the way so that we make sure that there is no collision and that no accidents can happen there uh, in, in space. Yeah. At a certain point, uh, well, all our cargo will have been delivered, all our fuel, our propellant is, is gone. We just need about one ton of propellant to re-enter and make sure we get to the uh, splash zone. So at a certain point, we'll do the undocking. Undocking doesn't sound so spectacular, but also this is a very, very critical phase and very time critical phase. We have a lot of activities that have to be done within a certain, within a few hours. So basically, we release the, 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 the probe, we'll just undock. Once we are f with, with springs, by the way, the springs will push us, uh, give us the initial uh, delta V or the initial movement. Once we're far enough from the station, we will fire our engines and we'll give a uh, velocity of five meters per second, which will allow us to go down and go away from the ISS. We'll basically go under the ISS and then go away from the ISS. This, we will only stay a few minutes, a few orbits like this, preparing in fact our impact in the South Pacific. So mo normally, normally it's scheduled that after one day and one orbit, we will splash down in the South Pacific in an, it's called SPOA, S-P-O-A-A, which is our South Pacific area where we have to land, where no population is living. We will have to give warnings as well to airplanes. There shouldn't be airplanes flying around in this zone. And also no ships, nothing. And this is already prepared now, or we start to prepare this now, so that we can have uh, a safe splashdown in the South Pacific. 